hasn't been. I can't. Uh, we had a really bad uh, tomato tomato cheese curry. <laughs> Off to a strong start, but didn't make the cut. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Step of Spotlight. I'm Sarah. And this is Bryce. And we're in Donaldson, Iowa at the Hinterland Dairy Farm. Bryce, have you ever watched that show, How It's Made? Yes. So we are going to learn how Hinterland Dairy makes their cheese. I'm Colleen Krogmeyer. My husband and I own Hinterland Dairy, as well as Krogmeyer Dairy, which is our working dairy farm. Well, I'm Ralph Krogmeyer. I'm the owner. Uh, I spend most of my time on, on the cow milking side. We actually have two dairies, the Krogmeyer Dairies, where we've always milked cows at since 1979. I'm Shannon, and I am the cheesemaker here at Hinterland Dairy. Um, I also am involved on the farm side as well, so I get to milk the cows and help with the herd. Um, and then we all kind of wear a lot of hats here on the farm. I call myself the kind of the jack of all trades and master of none, and I kind of like that title because I kind of fill in where it needs to be filled in. A little bit of my backstory, I was raised on a dairy farm. My dad milked cows north of Fort Madison. This is not the farm I grew up on. We moved, uh, we bought uh, some property in 1981 and then we moved the cows out here in 1985. Growing up, I liked milking cows. Um, I think in the back of my mind to have a value processing, uh, adding to the, to the dairy, either making cheese or selling milk or ice cream or all that was kind of always kind of in the back of our, our mind. Hinterland Dairy is something that has been in the works for decades. Ralph and I always wanted to take our milk directly to the consumer. We've always had a dairy farm. We did a lot of research. We traveled a lot. Any vacations that we ever took were, travel, were based around research for cheese or milk processing. Right now, when I started, there was over 30 dairies in Lee County. Now we're down to three. I think it's primarily the lifestyle of the dairy farm, that it's the day, morning, and night, you know, Christmas, weddings, funerals, hangovers, you name it. You know, you gotta milk them cows. We always wanted to do something, but we didn't want to have to bet the whole farm on it. I always say we never had enough time, courage, or money. And we finally got to the point after Shannon finished school and was worked out in the real world for a while, then she came back to the farm. That freed up Ralph a little bit to um, start working on the cheese plant. So I went to Iowa State and I got my bachelor's in ag systems technology. I was not gonna to return to the farm, but after about six months after graduation and being at a desk job, I realized I missed the smell of the cows and working with the land and making something with my hands. So I came back. I was glad to have the opportunity to come back and join my parents on the farm. And then about three years later, we realized we kind of wanted to diversify our farm and that it was the right time and opportunity. Hopefully we had enough hands to be able to build the operation and both have the farm side and the cheese making side. So it was in 2017, we started building our building here. We did a lot of the work ourselves and it wasn't until 2019 that we made our first batch of cheese. This is our pasteurizer here. It is a, about a, it holds about 135 gallons of milk. Up above are our pipelines that go to our raw bulk tank on the farm side of the building. We actually milk the cows in the rear of the building. And then in the morning, we pump the milk over into our pasteurizer. Uh, it's a vat pasteurizer, so it's a slow process, which is gentle on the milk, and we slowly warm it up to about 145 degrees for 30 minutes, which um, is enough to cook off any bad bacteria that may be in the milk. After it is heated up and pasteurized for 30 minutes, we cool it back down to about 90 degrees for cheese making. So then we have a pump that gently takes the milk over into our cheese vat, where we add the culture, which has already been added this morning, which is the good bacteria that we want um, in our milk to develop flavor and also create acidity to preserve that milk into cheese. Our equipment is about 135 gallons, which is approximately 1,200 pounds of milk. We measure milk in weight, but gallons is easier to visualize. And this will make about 130 pounds of cheese today. It usually takes about 10 pounds of milk to make one pound of cheese. 
We have some great advisors. Dad is the cheese scientist, so he's the one that's taken the most courses in cheese making. So he helps with the recipe development. We, we develop a recipe with the, between here, experimenting here, and the operation. And then we have some great advisors that have been cheesemakers for many years as well that help us to create a recipe that fits our milk. I don't know about being the cheese master. Uh, I mean, uh, I was the first one to take a short course at the University of Wisconsin. But our first learning sessions to really know what we was trying to do, we went to the University of Wisconsin. Took a cheese technology short course. Quark is a product that we didn't know what, did not know what it was till we was up there. That's a, a favorite that goes with beer, wine, about anything. Today we are making our Franklin Road Farmstead Cheddar. It's our yellow cheddar. It's become kind of the local favorite. and I'm very popular. It's my kid's favorite too because it's yellow. <laughs> we started with our fresh cheddar cheese curds, mostly because you can take the cheese and make it today and tomorrow you get to enjoy it. Cheddar cheese curds, true cheddar cheese curds can only be found on a cheddar cheese making operation. They are the fresh product and after about a week they're just non-aged cheddar. So those true fresh cheddar cheese curds you can only find at a cheddar maker. And then we turn those into an aged alpine. So that's aged about nine to 11 months. So after we've been in business about a year of cheese making, uh, we were able to share our aged cheddar, our first aged white cheddar. Then we make a fresh spread cork as well. Cork is a German style cream cheese. It's a soft spreadable cheese. I think it's got um, a little taste of pasture and sunshine and it really showcases the quality of milk that our cows produce and has a unique taste that's unique to our farm. Then we make a Happy Jack as well. We got into the cheese making process and a lot of people said, we want a Pepper Jack, we want a Pepper Jack. So we learned to make a Monterey Jack style cheese. Since we're making it here on our farm, we decided we could call it a Happy Jack. And then we've added different uh, flavors to that. So we've got our jalapeno Happy Jack, our French onion and chive, and a mango habanero version of our Happy Jack as well. Our flavored cheddar cheese curds are really popular. We have a garlic and herb that's solid cheese that a lot of people like. That's our go-to when we're sharing and tasting. And we've got a wild buffalo that's fun, and that one's been around a long time. We've got a fiery fiesta. It's got a little bit more zing to it. We had a dill pickle for a while. Some people are really glad it's gone, and some people are really miss it. How the operation works here, we start milking cows at five o'clock in the morning. And last night, you know, we milked in the cheese plant. We milk all the cows there. Uh, we started at about 4.30. It takes us around two, two and a half hours to milk at night. They give a little richer milk at night, and that's why we use the evening milking here at the cheese plant. Uh, they don't give quite as much, but uh, they give a little richer milk. And when you're making cheese and products, you want that solid portion of the milk. We bring about half the cows over. Uh, we can get them in the holding pen. Two young gentlemen and, and Shannon was milking last night and do a, a good job. We run the cows in. That parlor was designed by Iowa State University. It's called an Iowa Trans Parlor. You know, we try to get 10, 11 cows on a side and then we just flip, flop them back and forth. And the cows like this parlor. They come in good, they go out good. Once our cheese is made every week, then we just have to decide how to sell the cheese. <laughs> so we direct market all of our cheese ourselves. None of it goes to a distributor. Every other week we contact our retailers to see what their supply is, what they need, and then from there we go to filling our orders for them and delivering, um, and we do that every other week. So we send out to our um, local retailers. We have about five grocery stores that we sell to. We have a lot of little smaller shops, more specialty shops that we sell to and then we have a restaurant that takes quite a bit of our cheese. They take our cheese curds and they also are taking some block cheese now that they um, have a very creative menu and they do wonderful things with. And we've recently started doing the um, Des Moines Farmers Market as well as our local farmers market. It's a lot more exposure, a lot of people. We've made a lot of connections through that Des Moines Farmers Market. We also do farmers markets in Fort Madison, Montrose and Burlington. Then we have our retail shop here that we sell our cheese. We are only open on the weekends. We're open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you wanna come out some other time, just let me know because we're usually either in the processing room that we can help you or we are on the farm somewhere 
we don't get off the farm very much. <laughs> so we're always around somewhere that we'd be happy to help people if they want to come out to the cheese shop. My favorite part of it is actually selling the cheese. You know, when we started, our friends and family would come out and they buy our cheese and local people that we know. But when it hit me one day was when we took our cheese to Franklin, the little town up the road, because Ragbri was coming through. And people were lined up to buy our cheese and we didn't know any of them. <laughs> so that was what was amazing to me. It's like, wow, people are buying it and they don't even know us. So that was very rewarding. Our community has been so supportive of us. We, we give back, we try to give back a lot to the community as far as donations and things like that. And because they have been very supportive of, that, of us and our business here. I think from being just a, you know, primary selling as a dairy farmer, selling raw milk, to seeing this come to fruition from the labels, keeping all the bookwork, paperwork, I think you have appreciation for a lot of other occupations. I think I had the hardest time with pricing. Our goal was to sell all our cheese locally at a price point that people could afford to buy. So pricing is the hardest part for me because I want everybody to be able to buy our cheese. <laughs> you know, it's a challenge, but hopefully because we do have a fresh quality product, people are willing to pay a little bit more. But the name comes from way back when I was actually milking cows and it was pri before the Iowa caucuses. And I believe it was the 1980 election and it was Cokie Roberts that said, well, I guess tomorrow we'll find out what they're thinking in the hinterlands. And I did not know what hinterlands meant. And he didn't know if she was making fun of us here in Iowa or complimenting us. So I looked it up, that was way before Google, so I looked it up in the old dictionary and voila, it means out in the countryside. Uh, it's a German ethnic word and Krogmeyer is a German word or uh, we have German roots. And so he thought, well, that fits us perfectly. And so from that time on in our dreams, that's always been what we've called it, hinterland dairy. Most people who have farms, every farm has its own name. So the Brooks Place was the first farm that we purchased. The previous owner's last name was Brooks. So we call it the Brooks Place. And so when we had our first aged cheese and we thought, well, what are we gonna call it? This is our first one. Well, the Brooks Place was our first farm. So that's why we named it the Brooks Place. I think the Franklin Road is my favorite cheese. Brooks Place would be my next. After that is the Happy Jack, which um, we sell quite a bit of it. Seeing them, they're really good. Um, they've been on the farm their whole life, and then when they get to do the tours, and while I'm not the greatest at giving the tours, they are really good at it because they are the true dairy farmers, and seeing people experience that, and my parents sharing that with them, I would say is one of my favorite parts of now having a creamery on our farm. I joke about that one because I would not make a very good dairy farmer because it takes two cups of coffee for me to really get going in the morning. So I told Colleen if she ever wants to sell these cows, you ask me that first 10 minutes before the coffee kicks in and they'd go every morning. But after the coffee's in there, then I, I don't know, I like seeing cows. I, I, like, I like feeding cows. I like at the end of the day seeing them all lined up eating at the end of the bunk. Cows chewing their cud. Uh, cow chewing their cud, that's a healthy cow. I'd say for the most part, you know, heck, we all have our good days and bad days. But uh, as far as what gets me up, I'd say being fortunate, being healthy, being able to do this. Now that we saw how the cheese is made, let's try some out. I'm gonna try the wild buffalo. Wild buffalo, I'm gonna go for the Franklin Road. Very delicious. Mm, very good. With that being said, this may sound cheesy, but don't forget to hit like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. <laughs>